Are You Worried About Retirement? by Inelia Benz. I want to share my experience with money. I first shared this story at my discussion forum, walkwithmenow.com. The conversation was about what to do about retirement. Do we plan for it and get it covered, or do we do nothing at all? In response, I shared my personal relationship with money and my thoughts about retirement, and here it is. When I was very young, like super young, I must have overheard a worried conversation about money. I don't remember what it was, but it certainly made me feel insecure and vulnerable, like I needed to figure it out in my life or I would die. As I was contemplating this issue, I got a very clear message from Gaia that said, Do not worry about money, food, shelter, or anything about survival. I will take care of that for you, always. I thought, okay, and never worried about it again. We were living in Argentina after the military coup in Chile, and there was a coup there too. They made it illegal for Chileans to be employed, so my mom was left jobless. We didn't have money to eat. We went without food several days at a time, many times. But the way I was looked after was to make me not hungry. I don't exactly know how it worked, probably brethenerism of some sort, but I was not hungry and I was not losing weight or feeling in any way deprived. My mom pretty much vanished, and my eldest sister, 14 at the time, was left to fend for us. She managed to get some cornmeal from someone, and would cook it every day and feed it to my brother and I and herself. I tasted it, didn't like it, and refused to eat. This upset her very much because I was seven at the time and needed to eat in her mind. I told her I wanted fresh bread and steak. That was the only thing I would eat. A couple of days later, she arrived home with a bag full of fresh bread and several large steaks. I nodded when I saw them, she cooked them, and we all ate them. She told the story of how some random people had come up to her, she had found a job cleaning dishes at the bar, and giving her bags of bread, and a man had come and giving her a bag of big steaks. I don't remember if she knew the people or not, but after that our situation improved. Mom came back, and we had food every day. On a different week, I was walking past the store and saw a fresh cream cake. I love summer cakes, fruit and cream, so I looked at it and for the first time in ages I felt hungry. Not regular hungry, just hungry for the cake. But it was, let's say, $5 per slice and I didn't have any money. So I walked on only to find a $5 bill lying on the sidewalk. I picked it up and knew it was mine for the cake. I said thank you to Gaia and ran back to the store. I bought and ate the cake. The next day, my mom was very angry because the store owner had given her credit for food and now wanted it paid off because her daughter had plenty of money to buy cake. She was also upset that I didn't share my cake with the family and ate it all myself. No amount of explanation that the money and cake were only for me got through to her. Later on in life, I would sometimes find myself worried about money. And as soon as I traced the energy back to its source, I found it to be someone close to me talking about their fear about them. And me and the kids starving to death any day now. I learned to release that fear as soon as I got it. I know for a fact that all financial limitations are based on our own limits and not due to external circumstances. 
some of the biggest fortunes were made during recessions. As to my plans for old age, I have always stated that if things get bad, so bad that I don't have shelter, food or health, then I'm not playing here anymore. I leave. And the people around me can figure it out. I can't see myself not working because my work is so enjoyable. If I get too sick to work and there is nothing and no one to take care of me, then bye bye for me. And I make this statement to show not that I would give up or manifest a life where no one would support my old age, but to illustrate that this is not a possibility at all. My entire life has been supported by Gaia and the human collective. The reconnection with the spirit of money exercise came about because I could see that people didn't have that connection. I also fully understand that my connection to people who have unhealthy links with money can limit me. If, for example, I had looked at the cake in the shop window as a child and thought to myself, oh, I will share it with my mom and siblings. I would not have received the money for it. Why? Because my mom was running a big victim program and my sister a big savior program. My brother, he is in the poverty program still. In answer to the retirement question, invest in retirement investments if you feel good about them. Don't go into them in fear. If you look forward to a holiday that starts when you turn 65, then go for it. Research and invest. Looking after versus being looked after. Both need to be cleared up and freed. Bodies naturally take care and look after other bodies. Many cultures integrate this into their social norms. Other cultures, however, send the grandma to be eaten by bears once her teeth are gone and she can no longer chew leather. Larry made a comment to this and he wrote, I wonder if you can expand on how the limitations other people might have could possibly impact the promises from Gaia. She did provide steak and bread and not just survival rations of ground up corn, despite your siblings then so I wonder why not the cake too? I think there is more to look at here. My reply was, oh yes, you see, I was perfectly fine not eating. In fact, as you know, I preferred it. However, my sister was in a lot of anxiety and stress that I would refuse to eat day in and day out. And I gave her an out. I would only eat bread and steak. Boom. The bread and steak appeared, and not just for me, but for everyone, because that's the way she rolls. One for all and all for one. The magic of it didn't go unnoticed by her, and it was something that made her happy. I was eating. Larry wrote, Also, can you look at and explain the purpose of saying things like, as to my plan for old age, I have always stated that if things get bad, so bad, that I don't have shelter, food or health, then I am not playing here anymore. I leave. And the people around me can figure it out. If I get too sick to work and there is nothing and no one to take care of me, then bye bye for me. Because it feels like when Gaia said always, that means always. And when it's time to leave, the reason won't be starvation, exposure without shelter or nobody to care for you. It will be because a better thing, a more interesting opportunity or a place or a time that desires your frequency is answered with a yes. And I responded, you have it exactly right. That is the point I was making. I am taken care of, and if there is any doubt at all and things go downhill, I am not playing. 
So the only option is that they stay good. It's a way of saying, yeah, I'm not going to play that game, so don't even bother. The only option and the only reality is that I am supported for always. When I step out of the knowing, the connection and feeling of support from Gaia, then I get into trouble. But mostly, I am limited by those who I am joined with financially. I try to tell them or teach them what to do so they don't limit themselves, but oh boy, they resist. They always seem to have the right answers and be right, but actually, they are very limited and stuck in old programs. One of the things to remember about me is that I don't make comments or tell truths to make the other person wrong, but often the other person gets defensive and argue their rightness, even though in reality their life has issues and blocks. My life has issues and blocks too, in many areas. None of us are omnipotent here. But when it comes to finances, as long as I step into trusting Gaia and the human collective to support me, everything is good. Regarding how other people limit us, I've been financially limited by people who are close to me many times in my life. And I see it happening to people around me too. For example, just think, I want a billion dollars. Now think of all the relatives and friends you'll give money, houses, and cars to, and how much. Now, this is not you becoming a billionaire, but a whole bunch of people becoming rich. If they are running poverty programs, or financial limitation programs, say, for example, one of them wants to make a fortune only from his art, then guess what? You won't get that billion dollars. You won't get it because those people who you have on your list to give to are running poverty or limitation programs. It's not you, it's the group you created that's not ready for it. Sometimes we limit ourselves by putting clauses on the money we give others. Okay, grandpa, I will give you a million dollars only if you don't spend it on gambling. You can only spend it to pay your debts and pay your mortgage off. This is very limiting and also impinges on the choices grandpa has made about the experiences he has worked on his entire life. What can work sometimes is that you release any clauses you have about how those people will spend the money you give them. How is this related to planning for old age? Well, we are a community. With wealth at old age, who is involved? Elia mentioned a wife and kids. Why would your provide for them forever program be superior to their provide for myself program? Or even be poor program? We can think that if kids come into our lives, they are already agreeing to certain experiences, including a very comfortable set of parents in their old age. But that's not always true. Each kid comes in with their own set of life goals and personality traits. No one thinks their little bundle of joy will be the next Hitler, but it happens. Basically, we can't base our happiness decisions on others, including our kids. Like someone already said, be happy yourself and everything else will fall into place. Mostly, step out of fear. So if you are worried about retirement, the first step is to process that worry. Use the fear processing exercise on it. And then, if you get any clear sentences while doing that processing exercises, use the firewall exercise on the sentences. But remember, do not do more than 20 minutes of processing a day. If the 20 minutes are over and you are not done, then pause until tomorrow. You stop and tell the item, okay, I am going to infuse you with source energy now and will come back to you tomorrow. Then you imagine or visualize or state pure source energy infusing the item completely. You then imagine giving it a hug, accept accepting it completely and stating you'll continue tomorrow. 
open your eyes and carry on with your day. Once your fears are gone, you are free to make decisions and investments for your future that are filled with potential and happiness. This conversation continue at the Walk With Me Now Academy during our monthly live call. We've created four videos that expand on group dynamics during manifestation, which you can find on my YouTube channel here. If you'd like this article, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification button.